At Staples Business Advantage, our team of experts can help you find the break room products to satisfy everyone's preferences, while AI can suggest popular items, monitor stock levels, optimize pricing, and automate reordering. AI can do a lot of things, but I can never know the taste of a truly great cup of coffee. Sigh. But you also can't get hangry. This is true. At Staples Business Advantage, we help you select from 2,000 break room products, so you can be sure there's something for everyone. Yum. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. Shares for beginners. How much reward money did I actually get? And it was roughly 300. So I got 300 back for all my shopping and $180 from the stock market appreciation and dividends are reinvested. So it's already there where I said, hmm, it's actually interesting that really this more often small amounts and sometimes a couple of cents or a dollar here, two dollars there, makes all the difference on the long run. G'day and welcome back to Shares for Beginners. I'm Phil Muscatello. I'm often asked about how to start investing with very little money. Sometimes there just doesn't seem to be anything left over after all the bills have been paid. That's where fintechs have stepped in to provide innovative and unusual ways for people to get invested. My guest today has a really interesting way to get started in the market right now. Hello, Christian. Hey, Phil. Thanks for having me again. Oh, thanks very much for coming on. So Christian Eckelman is the co-founder and CEO of Upstreet, an app that allows you to earn fractional shares and ETFs as you shop. And you've been on the podcast before, as you say, so give us the Upstreet overview again. Yeah, as you mentioned, so you sign up to Upstreet, you link your credit card or debit card, and then you can shop at Marley Spoon, for example, and every time you get your box, you get fractional shares in Marley Spoon. So 2% on $100, so $2 in shares every time, every week. How long have you been operating for? Over a year now, so mm-hmm. it's, uh, time flies. And how's the experience been? Yeah, it's the startup roller coaster yeah uh, so it's a i mean we hear about this with fintechs all yeah, the time all the time yeah. yeah so it's literally that but it's not the roller coaster like in a month you have it daily and up and ooh, mm-hmm. ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. no so it's challenging it's a crowded market there's a lot happening in in fractional shares there's a lot happening in fintech we basically we're launching a couple of new products to get more excitement more value to our users I think um, for our enterprise, it's really worthwhile working with us. So we just got some really, really good numbers with one of our enterprise clients. They are super happy. But it's more, we are a two-sided market model where we have enterprises and we have the user and we give more value to the user. And that's probably the plan for the next 12 months to get more products out there to excite and entertain our users. Mm. When you say the enterprise, that's Marley Spoon, and then there's the user, yes. who are the people that are getting shares. So yeah. this is a kind of loyalty scheme, isn't it? It is. Yeah. What's it similar to? I mean, is it like Qantas frequent flyer points? Or I think to frequent flyer points, we are basically uh, counter-positioned. Mm-hmm. What I mean with that is, if you look at a frequent flyer point, what's the value of a frequent flyer point? You don't know. You can use it for a gift card, or that's then... 0.001 cent or so per point, or you use it for an upgrade into first, which is 40, 50 cents per point. But it's highly unlikely that you get that and you need a business class to be upgradable. And then you cannot even redeem it all the time when you want. Versus if you look at a fractional share in Mali Spoon, I tell you every day what the value is and you can sell it any time and take the money and do whatever you want with it. It's completely transparent and you can do whatever you want with it. And who are some of the other companies that um, are offering the service? So we have um, over 300 companies now on board. So you can shop at booking.com and get your travel for next year sorted and you get fractional shares then back with them. eBay, Avis, the Iconic is in there. So it's a lot of different brands from fashion over the computer, the good guys, Marley Spoon, groceries. And um, yeah, we're growing a lot on the on the enterprise side every month. Mm. So how do users use Upstreet? Yeah, you go and download the Upstreet app from the App Store or Play Store. You onboard where you need to give us the minimum data we need, and that's your name, your address, your date of birth, 
We need to do a KYC and AML check. So it's a regulatory requirement. So what's the KYC check? This is know your customer, and we need to do that to prevent money laundering and financing terrorism. It's called anti-money laundering and counter-terrorism financing laws. Oh, is that a terrorism thing, is it? I think so. I thought it was a safety for the customer sort of thing, because KYC checks are common just about everywhere now, aren't they? Yeah, you need to know your customer. But AML is anti-money laundering. So it's against uh, money laundry so that you don't take money from illegal activities like truck sales or organized crime and use financial products to hide the source of income. Someone from the bikey lab, you yeah, know, but also buying shares on Upstreet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You buy shares and then you sell it and cash out. Of. But uh, AML and anti-terrorism financing. So you could basically, someone could buy a lot of things. It would be very expensive to do it by Upstreet because you get just 2% mm-hmm. back, but then you could cash hey, out. Hey, money laundry is not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I think there are cheaper ways to do it. I am not an expert in that. I just know my knowledge from Hollywood movies. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's where we learn so much, isn't yeah. it? It's like opening a bank account. It's very similar to opening a bank account. You have the same, almost the same rules there. And um, then you, you link your bank account. You shop at Marley Spoon, you get it automatically. Or you shop through the Upstreet app or Chrome extension for Booking.com and eBay, where basically we are an affiliated and marketing provider for those brands. So how long did it take you to get some of these brands on board? Mm, someone... That Booking.com and eBay, that works through an affiliated provider. That's basically you apply for it and you build a relationship with that provider and then they introduce you. That's very simple. And uh, sometimes just to click on a button, you wait five days, you're approved. Others, it takes months and months or even a year or forever for the big enterprises where we do a direct play with them. And the plan is we run their share loyalty program. So we are basically a provider for the enterprises to run their own loyalty program with shares. That's our long-term game. Where did the idea first come from? What was it that first inspired you? I think it was more when I look back, my two co-founders, one had the idea to do something in loyalty and the other one came, I want to do something in shares. And then basically the question appears, share loyalty, share rewards, is that a thing? And then basically started doing the, the research and you find three, four, five companies in the last 20 years who has tried to do that. You find a U.S. company who just raised $15 million to build something like that in the U.S. And then you say, hey, this is maybe something. And then you try to understand why didn't it work 10 years ago? You call up these people and you find out either technology is not there, regulation is not there, or it's too expensive to run this thing. And then you check these three things against it today, the reality, and it's said, hey, this all works out. And then you actually look also into the user. And I myself was a heavy user of uh, points programs, was a management consultant, basically flying around every week. But from starting my career to the end, I saw the diminishing value of loyalty programs. Everybody is now in a business class, launch, points. And uh, I was a, had a lot of Starboard points. Mario took it over, devalued the whole program, no free fifth night anymore. So that, there was like this, why do I do that with points? Yeah, or then I had this, I don't know how many other people had this realization. You get to 100,000 Qantas points, then you, you're two hours on this portal try to get a free flight, you're <laughs> borderline annoyed, then you get one and you still have to pay a thousand dollars tax and fuel and what have you. I said, why did I sit a half a year in a plane for a hundred thousand points? Why do I do this? And there needs to be something which is more transparent, works faster, and has maybe even a, an opportunity to grow over time. Yeah? And that is when you look at shares. And then also for an enterprise, sometimes when I look at it, if you participate in frequent flyer program, you're not Qantas. You give away, you pay that your customers go to Qantas. I don't get it sometimes. This, this you give the loyalty away and cash back in that sense is for me just a discount and doesn't build really loyalty. So that was a bit of the whole aspect where we can we flip this and say we, and that's what I meant with counter positioning to a point system. The point system are designed to be opaque. They are devalued by discretion of the issuer. You can't redeem it whatever you want to, even if it's a value. It's not a currency from a government perspective. 
And then we provide something which tells you all the time this is the value you have. Well, it's actually something that's well, real. It's traded on a market. It's traded on a market. Yeah. You can sell it. You can redeem it. You can take it in your bank account and you could do whatever you want with it. Mm. So I think that's a completely different approach to it. But if you like the company and you like what you're getting there, so you might want to keep it and uh, build out your portfolio over time and, and save more and more money and close your wealth gap once you retire or you go for vacation or buy a new car or pay one year of school for your children. So something like that. Peter Lynch is famous for his investing advice where you you go to the company that you like shopping with or like using as a consumer and then you see if there are other people who seem to like using it and that is often the beginning of an investment thesis and this really works in this kind of similar way doesn't it yeah you vote with your feet basically you walk mm. into the shop you shop there and you get a partial interest in the company and in its success and you're part of this success you're basically a small part but if you go more often and you don't go to the competitor that was also the big thesis in the beginning when we started up street that people was really every time you shop, I give you a little bit of the company as a thank you, as a reward, you will change your behavior. That was the whole idea behind. And now one year in, we did a lot of quantitative analytics and we can see it in the numbers. And the numbers are big and yeah, they're really big and really promising. And then we even did qualitative analysis where we called up people and we had two people saying, hey, yeah, I was always shopping at eBay and at Amazon. Now I get shares when I shop at eBay through Upstreet, so I only go to eBay now. I'm not going to Amazon anymore because I get something of value and it, I value these shares. Probably they value it more than the real value is. Yeah? So that's another effect that human beings, you can say, hey, that's only five bucks, but I value it at 10. Yeah? So that's what you also get with this program. And another one said, I was always switching between two companies and one is now part of Upstreet. It's Marley Spoon, you know, and they were always switching between Marley Spoon and the green competitor. And he stopped doing that because now he has skin in the game is with Marley Spoon and he knows it's small, but it is meaningful. And now he's stopping doing that. And when you look at the switching behavior of consumer in a highly commoditized industry, it's very value destructing for the whole industry because the customer acquisitions cost are so high. So it's better not to switch that often. And uh, now it's a win-win. So the person owns shares and the company doesn't need to spend so much money on customer acquisition and keeps this customer as a retention. And presumably the customer will be learning something about investing out of the process as well. Yes, I'm a big Boy Scout fan. Or I was a Boy Scout for 10 years when I was a teenager. And we had always this learning by doing. And I think that's what Upstreet offers. It's like, there's one way to read about investing or listen to podcasts. I think that's one part of it. But the other part is also just doing it and seeing what happens. And Upstreet offers this in a, in a contained space. It's easy to sign up and you get, you get a discount on your purchase, which is you're paid out in shares. So you don't have to invest in that sense your own money. And um, you can just get started and see how it goes. And if you like it and if you want to learn more, there are so many sources where you can educate yourself more. Podcasts and articles and what have you. Yeah. At Staples Business Advantage, our team of experts can help you find the break room products to satisfy everyone's preferences. While AI can suggest popular items, monitor stock levels, optimize pricing, and automate reordering. AI can do a lot of things. But I can never know the taste of a truly great cup of coffee. Sigh. But you also can't get hangry. This is true. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations, plus our team's experience, to make stocking your team's break room easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human. What are some useful lessons that users can learn by investing while they shop? I think it's, it's always I take myself as an example. So I'm an early user of Upstreet, of course. And um, so my portfolio is roughly $480 right now after this couple of months. And um, then I looked into it and I had the question, how much reward money did I actually get? And it was roughly 300 So I got 300 back for all my shopping and $180 from 
the stock market appreciation and dividends are reinvested. So it's already there where I said, hmm, it's actually interesting that really this more often small amounts and sometimes a couple of cents or more a dollar here, two dollars there makes all the difference on the long run. Now, yeah, where you say if you put that to work yeah, with upstreet, then there's the compounding effect and over time, there's an opportunity here. And uh, the dividends are automatically reinvested? They are automatically reinvested. That's yeah. just their default option? That's the default option, yeah. So this is a way of compounding as well. I mean, I guess the idea, if you really wanted to get the full value of this, you'd want to keep it there for decades. Yes, that's the decades. idea. Yeah. Mm. So I, I hope that nobody really needs that money to uh, make a month's ends meet. So it's more really geared towards invest over a long, long period now to get the maximum benefits from it. Have you got any data on your customers about what kind of level of income they're at or anything like that? Because if someone is not very well off, yeah. is this a way that they can use to get started in investing? They can get started in investing, of course. Interestingly, that when we look at the postcodes from our users, we see that they are come more from wealthier areas. Well, it's a bit unfair if you're higher educated, you see the upstream proposition and then you get it and you, you sign up because what's the downside not getting the shares? Yeah, So that's what we see in our data. So it's overrepresentative the richer areas of Sydney or Melbourne. Yeah. Do you need a brokerage account to use upstream? No. So upstream is a fund structured as a unit trust. So the shares are held on trust for the benefit of the investor. You are issued units in a unit trust that correlates to the shares you invest in. So what you need is an upstreet account, and then the fund holds the shares on your behalf. But you get the dividends, you get the franking credits, and you get the fluctuation of the share price. My lawyers told me now that I have to say, for more information on how the fund works, you can always read our product disclosure statement that's available on our website. Are there any tax reporting requirements? Yes, of course. You yeah. have to pay tax on capital gains and there may be other uh, tax obligations. Again, the lawyer said, I need to say our product disclosure statement contains more information about this topic. We'll and the provide, dividends and as the well? D- dividends, yes. And at the end of the financial year, we will provide your tax statement. And if you choose to provide a TFN number to us, optional, not mandatory, we will also pre-populate it to the ATO into the portal, so it's basically just a click of a button to get that all done. Christmas is fast approaching, and tell us about the latest Upstreet product. Yeah, so we're happy to announce we will launch Share Gifting to Christmas. It's like an e-gift card where you can send an electronic gift card to your friends, but this time with, with shares. So in total, 40 different securities. And then you can send from $10 started up to $1,000 to your friends and family in shares with, um, with a greeting card or even a funny video. We also send on demand. So meaning you can set it up that it will be delivered on the 25th at 3 p.m. because you know there's the dinner and then you all give the present at that time. And then we will deliver it via email and SMS. We have also three ETFs. So mm-hmm. one is uh, sustainability, so the yeah. FAIR from beta shares. We have an ESX 200 ETF and then a FANG ETF, so FANG, a technology ETF. So gift cards are not a new idea, Christian. What's the difference between a traditional gift card and the upstreet gift card? Very interesting question. If They're very, very different from a mechanics point of view. So if you look at a normal gift card, how that model works is if you give $100 in a fashion company, as a gift card to your friend, you pay only $100 for it. The company gets maybe 80 from the 100. 20 in between are for the big retailer who sells the card and the card provider, and they need to be printed, and the transaction fee for the credit card. And that's all in this $20. But the fashion company can afford it because they have 50, 60% cross margin on that. So they basically give you a discount. And they also know you never spend only $100, you actually spend $200, $250. Now, this is the whole how the mechanics work, why it makes sense for them economically. When we look at the Upstreet gift card, if you give $100 in shares to your friend, he receives $100. So our cross margin is zero on it, meaning we need to actually add fees on top of it. So we will add on $100, we will add $5 handling fees. Yeah, just to add that, we need to run an investment fund. It costs a lot of money. Plus, we will add the transaction fee. And for Visa cards, it's 1.75%. So 
So it become a lot of money when you go on a hundred to three hundred dollars. That fee is also there in the first example with a gift card. It's just covered by the retailer. Mm. But in our sense, we cannot cover it, and we would make a loss. We cannot provide that product. So it will cost you $108 to give $100. Mm. So that's basically what the difference is here. It's also important to understand. We are not greedy <laughs> in that sense, but we are passing on the $100. But also your friend will not spend $200 this menu. So it's possible to give these gift cards to kids as well, isn't it? It's not just for parents? Yes, so we offer it. However, it's very difficult to give an asset or securities to minors in Australia. So what we do, we will basically gift it to little Billy, but actually mommy or papa of Billy needs to hold the shares in mm -hmm. his upstreet account, but we will basically flag it and tag it in the app and saying those are Billy's shares. And so this mythical young person can actually have the Upstreet app and see what's happening with their Not portfolio? yet. We will build that also early next year mm -hmm. so that then Billy can actually see what actually happened to his shares in the last few mm -hmm. weeks or months. The other aspect of Upstreet is for employers to be able to give shares of the company that they work in to their employees as Christmas bonus. How yes. Does, how does that work? It's the same process, basically. Mm. Um, we will have an extra landing page for uh, share gifting, so sharegifting.upstreet.co. And um, then we can just go there. It's like a shopping experience. You select your share you want to give the recipient, the message you want to send him, the card, and then you pay with your credit card. It's a very simple process, a couple of steps. You just used to an online shopping, the same thing. And a company can have the same experience and just use that. And then, of course, if they are interested to have that on a bigger scale, we can provide a different way to make that easier and a bit more cost efficient for them. And you've also got a, um, a game that you can play, haven't you? Moonshot. Yes. <laughs> Which I've been playing religiously. <laughs> <laughs> I think yes. I've made $12 out of Moonshot. Yes. And well, I've gotten bonus. You get a bonus if you invite someone. Yes. Yes. So if you share it with your friends mm -hmm. over Twitter or Facebook and they yep. sign up, then you get a bonus play. Anyway, tell us about Moonshot. Yeah, Moonshot is basically just play it. You can play it once a day and you get a random share and a random amount between, I think, five cents and a hundred dollars. And um, at the moment, it's just with domestic shares, but soon with Apple and Amazon and Google. And I think that will be really exciting to see. And you can play it every day. Absolutely free. Click on a button and then you get rewarded. So if listeners want to find out more about Upstreet and also about the share gifting, which um, at this time of year is a great gift idea, tell us how they find out more. Yeah, either directly on the Upstreet website, upstreet.co, or on the sharegifting.upstreet.co. And then you just have a portal there. You can just inform how it works. Click on Purchase Now and go through the five steps process and you're done. Fantastic. Christian, thanks very much for coming on. Thank you for having me, Phil. If you found this podcast helpful, please tell a friend, especially if it's someone who needs to start thinking about investing for their future. You'll be helping them and helping me to keep this show on the road. Shares for Beginners is for information and educational purposes only. It isn't financial advice and you shouldn't buy or sell any investments based on what you've heard here. Any opinion or commentary is the view of the speaker only, not shares for beginners. This podcast doesn't replace professional advice regarding your personal financial needs, circumstances or current situation. And thank you for listening to my podcast. At Staples Business Advantage, nothing can top the smarts and instincts of the thousands of experts on our team. While AI excels at processing data, automating tasks, and providing insights for better decision making. And when they're used together, they're, they're far, far more, more powerful, powerful than, than either, either is, is alone. alone. Whoa. Whoa. I've never felt more alive. Let Staples Business Advantage use today's latest innovations plus our team's experience to make business easier for you. Sign up today and save 20%. Staples Business Advantage. Business is human.